Minglawa. Over the 30 years I worked in international development, whenever we talked about girls or women's empowerment, the men would ask, what about the boys and men? We try to explain diplomatically that men already have power. With these gender and leadership experiences, I started women's leadership retreat 16 years ago. For the past six years, I focused on Myanmar because we need it here. We have bright stars like Do Aung San Suu Kyi, but for every 10 parliamentarians, only one is a woman. I'm talking about gender. But gentlemen, this is your side of the story. When I started the retreats here, the same question came up, what about the men? Two years ago, I introduced men's retreats, and engaging with these remarkable men convinced me that we must also empower our boys and men. We now have a remarkable, critical mass of empowered men in the Inlay Lake area, where couples have done the women's and men's retreats. These professional couples live in a traditional society, yet the husbands support their wives in their careers, help with housework and childcare, and try to be equal partners at home and at work. One couple co-own businesses and divide leadership roles according to whoever has the better skills. You may be thinking, this sounds more like men losing power. Let's see if you'll still think that after you hear the whole story. In the retreats, participants list good leadership traits. Every group comes up with almost the same list. A good leader is caring and supportive, flexible yet firm, consultative yet decisive, a good speaker, and a listener. These are some of the modern leadership traits in global literature. Our younger generations have the same expectations as their international peers. But in small groups, they talk about a different reality. It's the do as I say, command style of masculine traditional leadership. Not surprising, right? Showing respect because of age or status is a big part of our culture. It's rooted in Buddhist belief that men are spiritually superior. And it's been reinforced by 60 years of military rule. Our cultural practices also reinforce these norms, like the Buddhist Shimbu novitiation ceremony, where boys are dressed and paraded like kings before becoming temporary novices. On the other hand, for girls dressed as princesses, the ear piercing or natwen ceremony is ornamental. When we dug deeper, the women and men talked about how they were told to behave as girls and boys. Their lists tell a tale. Girls are raised to support and care for others, while boys are groomed to be dominant and lead others. To be able, what's striking is that the values boys are pressured to be a man are traditional leadership traits. Assertive, bold, dominant, tough. To be able to control themselves and others is a huge part of becoming a man. In the men's retreats, I have to coax them to talk to each other 
And they'd say, nothing to talk about. But once they relaxed and dropped their guards, they had a lot to share. One man shared that he's teased as being under his wife's thumb for helping with housework and childcare. Gentle and caring men shared that they tried to hide these traits because they're called weak, like a woman. Some were bullied as boys and called gay. The result? Men are pressured to put up a front of being tough and in charge. In today's democratic context, tough guy leadership is not effective. It took decades of struggle to be free of autocracy, and we've seen that it gets, yes, sir, I'll do it right away, and then going off, to do something else, do it half-heartedly, or do nothing. People either don't dare to question or find it doesn't pay, so they use passive resistance. We are now in an era of open international engagement. Our younger generations question why things are done in a certain way who need to be convinced and inspired. This context demands a new brand of leadership. Modern leadership, traits set that the participants listed, have some aspects of traditional leadership, like being bold and decisive, but include equally important traits, like empathy, consulting, listening, and patience that are often called feminine leadership traits. Perhaps you've seen effective leaders balance leading boldly from the front, collaboratively from the side, and supportively from behind, depending on the situation and people involved. So, doesn't it look like we need to empower our boys and men to believe that being caring and supportive are strengths. When empowered men can resist the pressures to always be in control and can show their gentleness, we'd have leaders better suited for these times. By the end of the retreats, all the men became thoughtful. They resolved to look within themselves to find balance and not to push their daughters, wives, and husbands, sorry, not husbands, <laughs> and female colleagues into support roles. When Men in power realize the gender pressures that they face. They understand the opposite pressures on women and appreciate the benefits of having empowered women by their side. We have examples of such gender-balanced leaders in our midst. The men also realize that they need to support each other to withstand or push aside social pressures as men who are tough and caring. Together with their wives, the empowered and laymen are trying to raise gender-balanced sons and daughters. What's happening in Inlay and in some families elsewhere can spread. You can be the generation to stop perpetuating these outdated leadership styles. Imagine 
what we can do as individuals and as a society to have shared leadership in Myanmar that will take us forward in the 21st century. In our new democracy, isn't it time to shed the yoke of autocracy at work and at home? Thank you.